I just found a brand new trading view indicator that is basically an improved version of the traditional stochastic RSI indicator. In this video, we're going to explore what this indicator is, how it works, and we'll also combine it with other technical indicators to create a super profitable trading strategy. If you end up finding this video helpful, remember to leave a like. Let's get into it. Now, the indicator that we're talking about is called Stochastic Momentum Index or SMI. To add it to our chart, we're going to open the indicator search tab and type in Stochastic Momentum Index and select this one by this TradingView user. Now, after adding this indicator to our chart, there's going to be this dark line right here that is not visible because of the dark mode on TradingView. So, let's access the settings and change its color to white as well as other settings. The Stochastic Momentum Index is a variation of the traditional stochastic oscillator. It measures where the current close price is in relation to the midpoint of a recent trading range with the aim of identifying momentum changes in price. As with many oscillators, it provides traders with insights about potential overbought or oversold conditions in the market. Now, this indicator is made up of very few components. Let's go over them real quick. So this white line right here is called the Stochastic Oscillator. Its main purpose is to identify the position of the current price in relation to a recent trading range. Next, we have this red line right here. It's basically an exponential moving average or EMA. By comparing the EMA to the stochastic oscillator, this indicator is able to determine the beginning of bullish and bearish momentum based on the crossovers of the two lines. Next, we have this green and red background fields. The green fill at the bottom represents an oversold market condition. It's created whenever the stochastic oscillator goes below this blue line at the bottom. On the other hand, the red fills at the top represent overbought market conditions, and they are formed whenever the stochastic oscillator goes above this blue line at the top. Speaking of the blue lines, what exactly are they? Well, these blue lines are basically the upper and lower bands, and they represent the upper and lower limits of the most recent price range. The upper line is located at the 40 level of this indicator scale, while the lower line is located at the minus 40 level of this indicator scale. And as mentioned earlier, they are used to indicate overbought and oversold levels in the market whenever the stochastic oscillator goes beyond. Now that we know what this indicator is made of, the next question is, how does it work? Well, it's really simple. In a bullish trend, whenever the stochastic oscillator, you know, this white line, goes below the lower band, that indicates a weakening of the pre-existing bullish momentum. This also means that the market is in a pullback. Traders should pay attention to these pullbacks because they represent areas of potential trade entries. On the other hand, in a bearish trend, whenever the stochastic oscillator goes above the upper band, that indicates a weakening of the pre-existing bearish momentum, and it's also an indication of a market pullback. These pullbacks in bearish trends are important because they represent areas of potential trade entries. Now, speaking of trade entries, how can we use this indicator to take trades? Well, I'm gonna show you. But before that, let's talk about Henker Trade. Now, you may be thinking, and what exactly is HankerTrade? HankerTrade is one of the most reliable forex brokers out there. And for that reason, I use them every single day. As you can see here, this is my trading history. I mainly trade gold. And up here you can see that this is actually a live account. The reason why I love HankerTrade so much is because of their extremely low commissions and spreads. On Forex, for example, the spreads can go as low as 0.0, .0 pips, which is actually the lowest they can go. For those of you who love high leverage, HankerTrade offers a maximum leverage of 1 to 500. If all of that isn't enough, they're also going to give you a 100% bonus for all your deposits up to $25,000. So if you deposit, say, $500, they're going to give you a bonus of $500. So now you'll have a total of $1,000 to trade with. To access the bonus, as well as all the other perks, sign up to HankerTrade using the link in the video description. Now, back to the video. 
Now, to trade using this indicator, here is how we're gonna do it. Now, in a bullish trend, for example here, we're basically gonna wait for the stochastic oscillator to go below the lower band. This indicates a pullback in a bullish trend. After we have the pullback, we want the stochastic oscillator to come back above the lower band and cross above this red EMA. This crossover indicates the end of the pullback and the beginning of a bullish trend continuation. And this is where we're gonna enter our trade. To take a short trade, it's gonna be the opposite. So in a bearish trend, for example here, we're basically gonna wait for the stochastic oscillator to go above the upper band. This indicates a pullback in a bearish trend. After we have the pullback, we want the stochastic oscillator to come back below the upper band and cross below this red EMA. This crossover indicates the end of the pullback and the beginning of a bearish trend continuation. And this is where we're gonna enter our trade. Now, looking at these two trade examples, you will notice that they were both taken following the direction of the overall trend. How do you make sure that the market is in a bullish trend or in a bearish trend? Well, for starters, you could draw a trend line, you know, like this or like this, or like this. Now, as you can see, drawing trend lines can be super subjective. To avoid such subjectivity, you could go with an indicator called EMA Trend Cloud. To add it to our chart, we're gonna open the indicator search tab and type in EMA Trend Cloud. Select this one by R. Westbrook JR. Double click on the EMA Trend Cloud to access the settings panel. On the Inputs tab, change the fast EMA length to 50, and then change the slow EMA length to 200. Head over to the Style tab and uncheck Fast EMA and Slow EMA checkboxes. After that, click OK. And now we have this beautiful trend cloud on our chart, which is just composed of the 50 period EMA at the top and a 200 period EMA at the bottom. The space between the two EMAs is filled with a green background color whenever the 50 period EMA is above the 200 period EMA, indicating a bullish trend. Conversely, whenever the 50 period EMA is below the 200 period EMA, the space is filled with a red background color signaling a bearish trend. This visualization makes it easy to see when the market is in a bullish phase or in a bearish phase without needing to look at the individual EMAs. Now to trade using this combined indicator strategy, here is how we're gonna do it. To take a long trade, first we want the market to be in a bullish trend. To confirm that, we just make sure that the EMA trend cloud is colored green and the price is trading above it. This indicates a bullish trend. Second, we want a pullback to happen within this bullish trend. To confirm that, we're gonna pay attention to the stochastic momentum index. We're gonna wait for the stochastic oscillator to go below the lower band of the stochastic momentum index. This indicates that the market is in a pullback within this bullish trend. Third, during the pullback, the price should touch the EMA trend cloud without breaking and closing below it. If a pullback just happens and the price doesn't touch the EMA cloud like this one, we'll skip that setup. We will also skip it if it breaks and closes below the trend cloud like this. Next, after the pullback, we want the stochastic oscillator to cross above this red EMA and that crossover should happen above this lower band. If the crossover happens below the band, that setup becomes invalid. Last but not least, we want the crossover candle to be a bullish or a green candle, like it is right here. If it happens to be a bearish or a red candle, that setup becomes invalid. All our entry conditions are met on this candle, so we're gonna enter a long trade here. The stop loss is gonna be set below the most recent swing low. And for the take profit, we're gonna set it at 2.5 times the risk. We let the trade run and take profit. For short trades, we're just gonna reverse all the conditions. So first, we want the market to be in a bearish trend. 
confirm that, we just make sure that the EMA trend cloud is colored red and the price is trading below it. This indicates a bearish trend. Second, we want a pullback to happen within this bearish trend. To confirm that, we're going to pay attention to the stochastic momentum index. We're going to wait for the stochastic oscillator to go above the upper band of the stochastic momentum index. This indicates that the market is in a pullback within this bearish trend. Third, during the pullback, the price should touch the EMA trend cloud without breaking and closing above it. Next, after the pullback, we want the stochastic oscillator to cross below this red EMA and that crossover should happen below this upper band. If the crossover happens above the band, that setup becomes invalid. Last but not least, we want the crossover candle to be a bearish or a red candle like this one right here. If it happens to be a bullish or a green candle, we will have to skip that setup. All our entry conditions are met on this candle, so we're gonna enter a short trade here. Set our stop loss above the most recent swing high. And for the take profit, we're gonna set it at 2.5 times the risk. We let this trade run and take profit. As you can see, the Stochastic Momentum Index indicator combines the core principles of momentum and price, giving traders a comprehensive view into the heartbeat of the market. Harnessing the SMI indicator isn't just about identifying overbought or oversold conditions. It's about gaining insights into the market's potential future direction, allowing for proactive rather than reactive decision making. That's been it for this video. I hope you found some value. If you did, hit the like button below and consider subscribing to stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next time.